Hi everybody, and thank you for accommodating this remote presentation. I'm Pierluigi Buttigieg, and I'll be talking about a semantic layer we've been developing for the SDGs and related entities that contextualize them. This is a collaboration involving quite a few people. Um, here you see some of the main proponents of the Sustainable Development Goals ontology we'll talk about. And without further ado, let's jump in. So we live in a highly connected planetary system. Its biosphere, its weather systems, its socioeconomic systems all overlap. And it's sometimes hard to recall that because we tend to treat them as separate things. But really, they're all nested within one another. The SDGs reflect this very deeply. It shows that we do rely on ecosystems and we engineer those ecosystems through our socioeconomic activity. And human well-being is connected to how well we can perform that management. And so the narrative includes phrases like ecosystem services and planetary life support systems, which are quite difficult to unpack when you're confronted with raw data streams, which many of us are. Um, in fact, where I work in the Avi, we have a whole range of data streams coming from remote sensing, iceborne platforms, deep sea equipment, which we would like to interface with the SDGs, but sometimes it's not entirely clear how to do that how to hop over to an indicator which may not talk about the sea ice or may not talk about some of the key data types that we're dealing with. Um, for example, our field samplers out there on the ice are collecting water samples that are worked up for DNA content and sequenced for metagenomic analysis, um, revealing functional and phylogenetic biodiversity that we hope to connect to goals like SDG 14, connected to life below water, and ocean health indicators, so that policy analysts can become more informed through our work. But that hop is a big one. When we look at the SDG 14 targets and some of their indicators, they are of course relevant to global systems, um, but they tend to focus on a more broad scale. For, for example, here we see the marine protected area coverage that is uh, key to the monitoring of SDG 14.5. If we look at the context and the clarification, it talks about things that we do indeed monitor, or we have the capacity to monitor, such as biodiversity, fish stocks, and the health of marine ecosystems. But that's in the context, not in the indicator. So how do we actually bridge that gap? If we mind map it, it's not so far-fetched. Our metagenomic data, it's about various kinds of biodiversity. That's a key aspect of marine protected areas, one of their key functions is the protection of biodiversity and its conservation. But how do we make that more apparent to machines who may not be able to make these connections quite so, quite so easily? And how do we do that across distributed systems? That's not the only problem we face. When we see a map of marine protected areas, there's a lot going on behind the scenes. There are lots of national and regional scale definitions that can really affect how machines understand and humans understand um, what is and what is not a marine protected area. So this integration exercise is a complicated one. Indeed, if we examine the definition, we see an international basis and an international agency that will set the baseline semantics for what is and what isn't a marine protected area and identify some of the key differentia, the key aspects that help others define what is and what is not an MPA, such as historical and cultural features. However, at the end of that definition, we see that national definitions, national designations, have a large role to play. And this results in the IUCN categories, again, which are internationally defined, being disaggregated and opened up across different national jurisdictions. And if we examine the World Database for Protected Areas, run by UNFWCMC, we see that different terminology is used to describe different IUCN categories. So often the information is behind that terminology is not very informative at the end of the day because the semantics vary in a relatively uncontrolled way. So there we go. We have a situation where disaggregation of semantics across stakeholder groups, nations, regions, disciplines creates a very variable space which we have to navigate if we want to connect data and information flows. And this is not just in the marine realm. Uh, this has been a problem in forestry for a very long time. Uh, there are hundreds of definitions of what a forest is, and therefore what forest degradation is, 
and it's really inhibiting the ability for us to report globally on um, change in forest coverage. Here we see a visualization of that. Changing the threshold of canopy cover from 10% to 30% presents a very different worldview of what the state of our global forests are, which of course has implications for policymakers and the public in general. So semantics is a real issue when it comes to visualizing data and information. So semantic resources need to target the knowledge that guides data and information. Um, and it makes it clear what we're talking about. Again, it's hard to say who is correct. There, each nation has the right to define things according to their own policies. But we must represent that definition very clearly, allowing us to filter by different stakeholder knowledge. And so we turn to semantic resources that range from glossaries up to ontologies. And because of how complex this realm is, we decided to go for stronger semantics and implement an ontology to express the semantics behind the SDGs. Briefly, an ontology is a machine and human readable logical representation of human knowledge. That's an important aspect to keep in mind, that the machine should be able to grasp what is meant by a word and what other things are connected to it. A term, I should say, rather than a word, because it's not just the syntax, it's really the meaning behind it. You can have multiple words associated with the same definition and the same ontological entity. This is part of the FAIR guidelines, which I'm sure everyone's familiar with in the room, um, especially the interoperability aspect of it, which specifies that knowledge representation in formal, accessible, and shared languages is part of a FAIR data package or a FAIR information package. So we're really aligned to global th uh, data themes right now, and hopefully we can move this forward in the realm of SDGs. So if that's an ontology, we would have classes or terms for each entity of interest. Each node in that graph could be a different definition of forest or marine protected area, for example. Importantly, the relationships or the links between those nodes are also defined and will constrain how a machine agent or an AI agent will walk across that graph and what kind of inferences it will draw. Since the ontology has to be available for distributed systems, the semantics behind each node in the graph or each ontology term or class has to be web accessible. So every node is assigned a URI that can be accessed by any system that's out there, and the surrounding semantics can then be derived from that through um, semantic web services that are present and linked to these ontologies. So this allows people from different disciplines to share their knowledge in an externalized way and also add knowledge to an ontology to make sure what they mean by something is very well represented. And this could be disciplinary definitions, or it could be variation in national definitions. And when you have that, you can point exactly to what your data or documents refer to. And that's a very powerful thing to have available. And so that's what we tried to do with SDGIO, or the Sustainable Development Goals Interface Ontology. An ontology where you can interface your data products and the phenomena you care about to the SDG process and the indicators and targets and goals. Um, by modeling those steps that may be in between them. In a sense, it gives you a means to bridge the heavily negotiated language of the SDGs to real-world data applications and data streams. The core ingredients that we put into SDGIO are as follows. We adopted the best practices from the Open Biological and Biomedical Ontologies Foundry and Library. Now, that's a very mature community that have been developing ontologies for biomedicine and health for quite a long time. And they've come up with a technology stack that can be generalized to quite a few other use cases. And so we're reusing that. We express SDGIO in OWL, the web ontology language, to make sure that it has that high level of expressivity we need to tackle the semantics of the SDGs. Um, it also allows us to run reasoners over the SDGIO to make sure that things are logically consistent. So all the goals, targets, and indicators have URIs, which can be reused or linked to data. But also importantly, we represent the entities around the goals, targets, and indicators, which contextualize those entities and support different national settings, which may have different adapters, if you will, to the SDGs. We always try to reuse existing semantics from ontologies that are interoperable with SDGIO, so mostly from the Oboe Foundry stack. And we've created a community of practice within UN Environment 
to extend the coverage of SDGIO by soliciting input. There's a link for you to explore if you would like to be a part of that community of practice and make sure your use case is represented. So if we have an example, like if we look at an ecosystem service definition with its URI, we have a human readable definition, and then the graph below shows the local neighborhood, there's much more, but that's the local neighborhood in SDGIO that contextualizes an ecosystem service. So you see the different kinds of ecosystem services, and you see the links to other concepts or knowledge representations, such as that of natural capital. So we've been working on that for a while now, since 2014. It's gradually building it up and interfacing with others in the SDG process to announce our work and solicit input from other parts of the UN system and related uh, agencies. So some of the terms we've been focusing on, some are relatively straightforward, and others are very difficult. When you're trying to define the semantics of adequate in different national contexts, you can imagine that this can be a very difficult problem. But indeed, that's something we have to scope out, and that's something we're trying to solicit more input on to develop that knowledge graph. We've engaged a number of volunteers through the UN Volunteering Program who are currently poring over uh, policy documents and uh, technical reports about the monitoring of the SDGs and helping us put together more definitions to extend those knowledge graphs. Now, this will allow you to have an anchor for your data types, assuming we cover that case, and if we don't, certainly we're very receptive to requests to cover a certain domain, especially if you can provide the knowledge or the definitions from your field for us to be able to build SDGIO in the direction that it can interface or contact your own use cases and data streams. With those ingredients, we are weaving together this semantic layer for the SDGs, reusing a lot of very mature ontologies and adding new content as, as needed. Um, of course, this has to expand in many more directions because of the sheer expansiveness of the agenda. And this is why we rely on users to tell us how best to engage with their data products and how to make sure that they have something to point to on the semantic web to help them define to other systems what their data is about. With multi-stakeholder input, we're getting closer to really representing what things like resilient food systems are, what healthy oceans are to different people in different contexts, and what things, processes like access to education actually look like across the globe. Of course, this is a massive task, and we're, we don't pretend to have covered um, nearly enough, but at least we have the foundation to, to approach this. And we're inviting others to join us, to help us edit this, to join the initiative. It's open source, um, and help create those interfaces for as many people as possible. On a practical level, interfacing with SDGIO and other ontologies doesn't have to be too complicated. If you link your variable names to URIs that point to some sort of web resolvable semantics, you've already made that first step. And if you download the ontology, you can query it with something like Sparkle, which is like SQL for ontologies, and ask questions like uh, retrieve all the environmental processes that are relevant to a certain indicator. Of course, there's some, some coding to do, but that will pull back a list of URIs that satisfy that condition, and you can take them, and if you've annotated your data set, you can query your data set for those URIs using SQL or whatever your favorite uh, language is, and pull data that has been aligned to that knowledge. So it's a, it's a small step, but it's a very significant one, because that's then connecting to global knowledge graphs. Um, before we close, just a couple of examples of uh, groups that are applying SDGIO and what we're learning from them. Um, one example is with the Public Affairs Committee in Karnataka, in India, who are using SDGIO to link data about SDGI 8 in their context. And from them, we are learning about the Indian national context in regards to SDGI 8, and then developing the ontology to cover that case. Hopefully then this will be a model for other nations or other states to be able to present their understanding of SDG8. Uh, of, SDG uh, similarly, in Germany, we're working on a Helmholtz-funded project called Internas, which is focused on getting biodiversity mainstreaming efforts and policies and multi-sectoral approaches well represented so that the German implementation of international assessment requirements 
is well represented not just in SDGIO, but in other ontologies like ENVO. But again, it's a give and take. When we develop the semantics, it connects their efforts to broader semantic uh, resources and data science initiatives. And in return, we have that knowledge provided by their significant efforts in interviewing policymakers and other stakeholders. So wrapping it up, we're providing what we can as far as a stable semantic resource for the SDG, which we'll continue to expand by engaging stakeholders around the world in different scales to capture their knowledge and show how it can be expressed in a harmonized way. Hopefully then, the SDGIO, being an open project, will attract more editors, which we can train if necessary, and then become self-sustaining and decentralized over time. Um, in the meantime, we're seeking more use cases, and if you would like to participate, please contact me. My email address is right there, bottom left, or contact us through our GitHub development page. So with that, um, I'd like to acknowledge quite a few people. There's no time to go through all of them. Um, and I'd very much like to thank you for your attention. And again, sorry, I can't be there. Hope you're having quite a lot of fun. Um, do contact me with questions. Bye for now.